Hello, it's Alex. Welcome to my channel and thank you for joining me today for Friday Sews. And thank you also to everybody who wrote such lovely, warm, welcome back messages after last week's video. I really, really appreciated it. Um, yeah, it's really nice to be back. So this week, I'm sort of continuing in a similar vein, very much looking towards autumn and winter trends and which of those I might like to make and sew for myself. And this week I'm looking at the trend for sweater knit dresses and sweater knit vests. And in both cases, those things were always kind of around, um, probably more the sweater knit dresses than, than anything. Um, they never really go away, but every now and then they just have a bit of a moment, don't they? And this year is one of those years. Pretty much every shop on the high street has their version of a sweater dress. There is quite a lot of variation in terms of neckline. Polar necks are quite popular, but a lot of different necklines, including yeah, V-neck ones with buttons down the front. I'm not sure I'd be quite as mad to sew, um, sew one of those, because it depends on your fabric, but buttonholes on sweater knit, you don't need to be doing that if you don't really have to. Um, but yeah, lots of different necklines. There's not really a particular dominant colour out there at the moment. Um, but the one thing they do all have in common is the length. They all are very long, kind of maxi length. And that is because if you know me, you know I like a long dress. That is what I have made here. I've got a little split at the side. Um, yeah, and I really, really like these dresses that are around at the moment. So I wanted to see how I could make one for myself. I think they're really versatile. They're one of those things that you're never really going to struggle with what to wear with it because, yeah, it's just throw it on and go, isn't it? Um, and even in terms of footwear, like I was thinking, for example, about wide leg trousers, you, you, you know, something like that, you're more limited with what you're going to wear on your feet. But something like this, um, on a brighter day, I would wear it with trainers and on a day like today, I mean, I've got my long boots on, but I don't have tights or anything because actually it's a really warm day outside. It's been really cold. And typically the day I decide to wear a sweater knit dress, it's 19 degrees. Hey ho. Um, but yeah, I mean, big old tights and big chunky boots like Doc Martens or something like that. That's probably the way I'm going to wear mine, but you can kind of style it pretty much with anything. They're dead easy, aren't they? So obviously the thing to do was look at fabric and to look at patterns. And in terms of fabric, I had this in my stash. I don't know where it was from. I don't think it's necessarily the most fabulous quality sweat in it. It's definitely got no natural fibres in there, um, but it's had enough stretch to deal with a pattern that was asking for jersey, because I don't think any of the pattern companies are necessarily promoting that sweater knit pattern. So really you've got to look for jersey or stretch. Um, and that means of course that you need to make sure that there's enough stretch in the fabric that you choose. Here comes a train. Okay, the train is gone. So yes, you do need to be aware of how much stretch there is on your sweat in it. So if you're buying online, perhaps get in touch with whoever you're buying from, um, because any pattern you get is gonna be designed for jersey. It's going to tell you how much stretch is required, and you just need to make sure that your sweat in it fabric is doing the same sort of thing. Most of them are um, not with any natural fibers, but there are some out there. I've seen some online. Um, but of course those ones do tend to be a little bit more expensive. Uh, having said that, it's nice and warm and cosy and I don't like to get cold, so I'm very happy. So obviously the next thing to do was to have a look at patterns and I'm sure lots of us do this when you're kind of looking for a specific pattern, when you've got a specific project in mind, you tend to go to your kind of handful of favorite pattern companies. And for this kind of thing, anything that's a knit, my newish, certainly in the last year, find is Pattern Emporium. And I went and had a look there and they had the perfect pattern, which is the Entice Me Fitted Dress, which is what this is. Um, I will just say that I am an affiliate for Pattern Emporium, so there will be a link in the description box below. And if anybody uses that link and then buys a pattern, I get a small percentage. It doesn't make 
any difference to how much you're charged you just get charged the same old same old um, but yeah the reason I've been kind of drawn to them as my first port of call for anything stretch related is that their patterns are always incredibly versatile they always come with a lot of options the instructions are always fab um, and they quite often have the ability to mash up with other pattern emporium patterns so for example i was thinking that i've got the unwind top from there which comes with a hood and there's no reason why i couldn't use that hood on this knit dress and then have a hoodie version and i really like that they're also pretty inexpensive as well which is always always a good thing so i had a look there this is as they say it's a fitted dress and i will admit that i one well, goes as far as saying I sized up, but I'm sort of between a 12 and a 14, and I made the 14 rather than the 12. And um, yeah, I just thought I'd rather have things not cling too much. <laughs> um, but lots of variation. As I say, there are three or four necklines. There's a, a, a high round neck, which I guess is like a crew neck, a mid round, which is what I put on here, a low round which I guess is more like a scoop but as I say if you have some of their other patterns you may well be able to mix and match necklines. Uh, sleeve wise a number of all the usual sort of lengths in between. I went for long sleeve um, but as usual I tend to push them up. Uh, but there's also a flutter sleeve and a um, cap sleeve oh and a, like a vest a sleeveless vest version and I have to say I do think that in the spring, having a sleeveless sweater net um, dress could be really good. You know, for those days where you don't quite know what the weather's doing, um, I would definitely wear a sleeveless one, you know, with bare legs and trainers and throw on a cardi if you get cold and throw it off if you're not. So, yeah, I definitely think I would make that. I mean, obviously, this pattern has been designed for jersey fabric, so great one to have because obviously who doesn't need a jersey dress. So the way that the pattern works is that the front is all one piece and the back is in two pieces. So the bodice and the skirt are separate there. I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not, but there is a seam here. And then you've got the option in terms of in both, in the bodice and the skirt, to do it with a centre back seam. So that means in terms of fit, because as I said, this is designed to be a fitted dress, in terms of fit, you've got so many different seams there that to take or add extra fabric or take it away if you need to. Now, in my case, I didn't do that because I didn't want it to be super, super fitted. Um, so I just went for the bodice and the skirt cut on the fold, so no centre-back seam. Obviously, the other advantage to having a centre-back seam on the skirt is that if you wanted to, you could have a split. And I chose not to have a split at the back, but to do it on the side. I just prefer it. I don't know, it just feels a little bit more, a bit more modern, I guess. Um, but I think with this pattern, you don't necessarily even need to have a split. You'd certainly have enough room for walking. I just, I just quite like having it. I don't know. <laughs> um, so yeah, lots of different options. It's definitely one that's designed to have this length with it being very much part of the look that the dresses are long i don't know that all of the jersey dress patterns that there are out there are necessarily designed to be this length so that's another reason why i chose this one and in terms of the instructions pattern emporium are always fabulous that's one of the reasons why i'm drawn to them and um, certainly if you're a beginner or some, somebody that's kind of wary of knits I would definitely say go and check out Pattern Emporium. You know, any of their patterns are fabulous, but the instructions are great. And in the case of this one, not only do they walk you through all the different options, there's an awful lot about fit, I guess because it's supposed to be a fairly fitted dress. A lot about fit and even little hints like what to do if your dress is riding up as you walk and how to kind of make adaptions or changes for that or if you're somebody with a bit of a tummy you know that sort of thing there's also an add-on pack for ruching I think it's ruching at either both sides or, or one side which is often a little bit more flattering and um, so yeah I'm really really happy with it I really like this neckline 
But then the other thing that comes with this pattern is the option for a detachable neck warmer. And I thought I had a little bit left. So I thought I would do that because then I've got the option to either have it as is or to have it looking a little bit more kind of polo necky. That's England. I can't remember what you, not, what you call it when you're not in England because we call it a polo neck. Roll neck? I don't know. So yeah, I did that, followed the instructions. The instructions had two different widths. One that is the wider, I guess, the more drapey. This is the narrower option. Um, and I think it, I don't know, I just like, I like it when you've got a pattern that you can wear in more than one way. So yeah, I've just now got it as, as I guess a kind of drapey roll neck version as well, which I don't know, I really like. I really like that. I really like being able to get more than one look out of one item. So I'm really happy with that. I was thinking maybe of making a second one that was even narrower to feel a little bit more polo necky. But of course the problem is that I'm then going to have this sort of strange bit of, uh, bit of gap of skin, which is perhaps going to look a bit odd. So yeah, but I'm really happy with it like that. And then in a similar vein, I was thinking, okay, what else could I do to kind of give me more variety? And I had a little brainwave, which is that last year I made one of these and it's the assembly line mock shirt. Um, so yeah, because I thought it would be nice to have a collar underneath you know, little collar, little shirt collar poking out here. But then at the same time, because it's quite a fitted dress, you don't want the bulk of a shirt underneath and strange, you've got enough of your own strange lumps and bumps. Well, I have anyway. Don't need any to add to it. So I remembered that I had this and think actually wearing that underneath gives me a third way to wear it before I've even done anything in terms of styling or jackets or anything else. So I'm really happy with that. Let me just put it on. Okay, so I don't have a mirror in here, so I'm not sure how that's looking. But certainly it gives me another option, doesn't it? And this one is um, a lining fabric that I made this one out of a little while ago. So it actually doesn't feel that nice to your skin. It was just an idea that I thought might, because uh, I like the print, you see. I like the print so much, I thought, could I get away with making it out of lining fabric? And when it comes to wearing it, I'm not, choosing it just because of how it feels but it reminded me of this pattern and I certainly would um, make some more because if anything if nothing else they're um, a great scrap buster you know you don't actually you've always got those odd bits of fabric left and to make one of these you don't need a lot of fabric at all and in fact even if you just because the widest bit if you've got is the collar and even if you cheated and did a bit of patching, you know, a bit of a centre back seam uh, on the collar or on the back piece. It really wouldn't matter too much. And I think they're a great scrap buster, yeah, mock shirt. Mm. So then the other thing that I said at the beginning was that I was looking at sweater knit vests. And again, in absolutely every shop there is on the high street, sweater knit vests are everywhere. Um, there are some that will be made out of like sweatshirting or French terry, those kind of fabrics. But again, the majority are sweat, sweat in it, if I can get my teeth in. Um, and the majority are v-neck and people are wearing them over shirts, oversized shirts and tailored shirts, t-shirts, dresses, pretty much everything you'll see at the moment is styled with a v-neck sweater vest. So. Again, I thought that's something I really like, I'd like to make, and I had a look at what patterns I had to start with. Because I do think this is the kind of thing that you could pretty much adapt from any sweater pattern you already had. But, so you could basically take the pattern you've got and remove the sleeves, which if you're making a sleeveless top, norm, normally that won't entirely work because the sleeve hole that you're left with will be too big. But in terms of a vest, because you're wearing it over something, you need that to have a little bit of width there anyway, don't you, to get not only your arm through, but the, the item of clothing you're wearing underneath it. So I think you could very possibly get away with it. But then I thought, well, let's just see if I've got anything that will work 
as is without me having to fiddle around with it. And sure enough, I did have the very pattern and it's the Como Knit Top from Stylark and I've made one before and I made it donkey's years ago in this jersey fabric. Sometimes I wear it, you know, just to slob around the house in. Um, so it's probably a bit pilled and all the rest of it. But I thought this would actually do the trick nicely. This um, is pretty much made out of the packet and I knew it would be too long because most of the vests that are around at the moment are cropped and I remember at the time making this and thinking it was long in the first place without even taking into consideration that you want it to be cropped. So, yeah, see what I mean? It's hopefully you can see that. So it's all the way down there. Um, and I want it to be more like that kind of a length, I guess. Um, but I put it on just to see whether it would do the trick. And I, and I thought, you know, I think it will. The only thing that I did think I would change other than the length is the sleeve, just this length of this shoulder seam. I just took a little bit off, I think it was about five or six centimetres, and I literally just drew a line on the pattern and, and cut it off. And because I'm making this out of a sweater knit and it's pretty, there's quite a lot of movement in the fabric. I'll show you the fabric actually. Um, I bought this, helpful if it was the right way around. I bought this fabric at B&M Fabrics in Leeds when I took my oldest daughter back to uni a couple of weeks ago. Um, so yeah, it's this really nice, kind of almost like a boucle sweater knit fabric. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of movement in that. So I didn't have to worry too much about turning the sleeve under because on this pattern you literally just I'm going to overlock it turn it under and sew it on um, so I didn't have to worry too much about that. I sewed this yesterday it took me if it took an hour I'd be surprised. One of the things that I really like about it is because it's a v-neck and that's the problem with a lot of those sweater patterns is that very few of them are v-necks because they're a bit tricky to make aren't they? Um, but what this one does is that the fabric on the front panel is doubled. So you've got two layers on the front and a single layer on the back. You could make it with a single layer, but then you'd have to consider binding the neckline. But because you're using two layers, you've kind of in effect, the second layer is almost like a facing. So you sew the necklines together, clip it at the, the point and turn it the right, no, turn it, the wrong way around, stay stitched, not stay stitched, what's it called when you sew the seam onto the onto the facing? You'll know what I mean. Stitch that down and job's good. I've explained that very poorly, but um, hopefully you'll know what I mean. What I'm trying to say is that you don't have to worry about binding. Um, it's really quick and easy to make and I'm really, really happy with it. I'm not sure that it's necessarily gonna go with this dress, because that wasn't my intention necessarily. I was thinking about it uh, more really to wear under shirts and tops. I am just about to start making the, there's a Liberty shirt pattern that I bought from the fold line. I think it might be called Thea, something like that, which is a fairly fitted shirt, but with a really big billowy sleeve. That's what I'm gonna be making this week. And I thought that sleeve would look really nice underneath a sweater vest. So the only thing I haven't done with this yet is I haven't hemmed it because I just needed to see how it would look once I'm wearing it with jeans and a shirt underneath. So I've just overlocked the end, which to be honest, I think I could possibly get away with. So I don't know whether I'd necessarily wear this as an outfit um, together but certainly it came together really really well so all I did really was lop off a bit of length I didn't do it where the shorten and lengthen line is because there is a bit of shaping to it and I needed that shaping to stay you know around the waist to stay where it is so I literally just lopped it off and yeah that slight adjustment on the shoulder line so that's not coming out quite as far as it was 
But I think that this is doing the trick really well and a lot easier than fiddling around with binding and all the rest of it around that neckline. So I'm really, really happy with it. So that's everything that I've got to show you so far. I haven't actually really done any sewing this week until yesterday. And that's because I had my sewing machine and my overlocker out to be serviced. And I have to say, it reminded me why we should all really service our machines. So I thought it was worth a mention because my overlocker hasn't been great for a little while and I've just been putting up with it. You know, sometimes the tension's out and I'm fiddling around with all the dials and trying to get the tension right and in the end sort of settling for something that will do. Um, having sent them off to be serviced, um, yeah, they came back as I say, I picked them up yesterday and I made this as soon as I got back. So it's partly, partly sewing machine, partly overlocker. But the overlocker was an absolute dream. Tension was beautiful. My overlocking looks all lovely and neat again. My sewing machine really was in for a maintenance service, but there were a couple of little niggles. It, the thread wasn't working on it anymore and that sort of thing. So yeah, little reminder, get your machine serviced because you won't regret it. It's I feel a little bit like I've got new sewing machines again. And if anybody's in the Northwest, I took them to a new place this time uh, called SA Sewing Machines in Rochdale, and they were brilliant. Nice and quick as well. The last place that I took my previous sewing machine to took six weeks, which as you can imagine, was like some form of torture. Um, these guys, they, they had my machine done within a day, two days, and the overlocker was a little bit longer just because we waited for some parts. But yeah, I really recommend them over in Rochdale. But yeah, get your machines serviced. You won't regret it. And the other thing I wanted to touch on briefly before I head off is a sewing challenge. And yes, I know, I know there are lots of them around at the moment, but this one is really worthwhile. It's the Dress for Success Challenge, and it's being run by a lady called Teresa, and her Instagram name is purple stitch studio the idea is to make clothes for women to send to this charity the dress for success charity who are all about empowering women towards economic independence so the idea is to think about clothes that you might need for a job interview or for the first few weeks when you do get a job and perhaps somebody that's strapped for cash and needs a little bit of help with their wardrobe so people are either sewing things specifically or things that you've sewn that would fit those criteria that perhaps you're not wearing. And the idea is you can either send those items to Teresa herself and she will get them to the charity or you can send them directly to the charity. There's a little bit of information about putting a little label about uh, fabric content or washing information, that sort of thing. But it's all, all the details are over on uh, Teresa's Instagram post, which obviously I will link in the description box below. It runs through to the end of November, 20th of November, I think. So there's plenty of time. Um, I just think it's a really worthwhile one. And even if you don't make something specific, don't we all have things or some of us have things that we've made that we're not using as often as we could or for whatever reason. Um, so yeah, definitely one to have a look at and to take into consideration. So I think that's me pretty much done for now. I will be back very soon. I am going to spend my weekend sewing on my, what feel like brand spanking new sewing machines and um, definitely going to be making that uh, Liberty shirt. I'm dying to get on with it, to be honest. Um, but I'll be back very soon. I've also got to persuade my husband to put some shelves up for me in my new sewing room. And then when that's done, I'll have a, you know, a little tourette. Um, I'm sure it's not that exciting to fill a whole video, but I'll certainly show you when I'm done. Um, in the meantime, check out Pattern Emporium for this dress um, and have a little look at some of the fabric shops for sweat knit fabric. I've talked about them a lot. TFG Fabrics um, have a really good range of sweat knit fabrics. Worthwhile checking the amount of stretch on them, um, but Casey, who runs it, is really helpful. But there are lots of others. There are some really nice looking sort of, um, I think it's got cotton, mostly cotton in it, sweater knit fabric at Lulu Designs as well. I'll put a link below. That's really nice for a slightly more high end version. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, I'll see you very soon and look after yourselves. Okay, bye bye.